What's up guys? Today we're going to go over how to make a bi-directional uh, multi-floor water elevator. Uh, what I mean by that is one where a water column can either go down as it is right now, or you can press a button and have it go up. Uh, multi-floor meaning that you can do multiple floors on the same column. So this is like my second floor if you want to call it that. Um, I even have a third cruder floor. Um, and in this case they both have buttons that we can use to change the direction of the bubble column. I could use this to go down to the second floor and then I could also use this to go down to the first floor uh, as well. This design um, allows you to put the bubble column also in the middle of the room like this without having any ugly redstone visible, um, like no pistons on the floor here, um, at the expense of the design being slightly more complicated than one that might like go into the wall or something. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, the dimensionality, uh, very crudely, will be like this, where you're going to need some room under the block, like under the floor that you have the bottom of the uh, water elevator on. Um, I think you need, you'll see, you need one, two, three, four, um, if you include the block that the redstone's on top of. And you're going to need a decent amount of space under it. Um, it's a little lopsided to one side because the block in question is right there. Um... So be aware of this. You're going to need a little bit of space under it. Um, as far as the redstone for all the buttons, um, all you need to do is connect the buttons down to the redstone down here. Um, so there's no real requirements for this other than you have to connect the buttons. Um, you have to connect the buttons to a redstone signal and then just get it somewhere else. Um, so with that, let's jump right in. All right, so real quick with the materials that you will need are two normal pistons, uh, one sticky piston, a single comparator, two redstone torches, at least seven repeaters, and I say at least is because you need seven for the stuff down here, but you might need more if you are going a far distance between floors. Um, in order to get the button signal down to the bottom, you might need to refresh the signal once or twice um, in order to get them all the way down because it can only go 15 blocks with that one. Um, so you'll need at least seven, but probably more repeaters. Uh, you'll need three droppers, a hopper, a uh, soul sand, a magma block, you're going to need like some opaque block to build on. I used like smooth quartz block in this case um, and the water source blocks. You're probably going to need something to block the water uh, so that you can get into the column at all. Um, I used gates uh, and I also like using signs a lot. You can use whatever you would like, trap doors or whatever, uh, just something to block the column or the water from flowing so you can get into the column. Um, you're going to need a decent amount of redstone just to like wire everything up um, down here as well as from the buttons above and then you're gonna need the buttons themselves. Okay, so we're gonna do the bottom of the entire thing first. So I think we're just gonna rip off the band-aid to do the most complicated thing first. Um, so this thing is the floor of my base where the bottom of the water elevator is gonna be. Um, so this block will be the soul sand or the magma block right here. Um, I built in the air just so I have some space under it. Um, so we'll do the pistons first, I think. So two blocks below the soul sand or the magma block or whatever, we want to place a sticky piston facing up so that when it's contracted, there's a block in between it. Um, so it faces up, it's two blocks away. And then on either side, um, it can either be like to these sides or it could be to these sides. It doesn't really matter. Um, we want to place a normal piston facing into this area and it's like into the middle here. Um, and it will also be two blocks away so that there's a block in between it and the soul sand and like the sticky piston. On the other side as well, we're going to do the same thing um, so that we have something that looks like that where the pistons are able to push blocks into the middle here. Um, okay, so on one of the sides of the sticky piston, um, this side will have the least amount of redstone on it, uh, just if that helps you plan a little bit. We're going to want to place um, an opaque block here of some sort, a redstone dust on top of it, a re uh, redstone torch right next to the sticky piston so that it will... Um, extend. And then right here, I have a redstone repeater. Uh, this is just so that you can get some delays correct. Um, you know, it, it being next to the, this piston doesn't really have any significance. Um, and then I'm just going to build the redstone out. I'll go by, I'll go by four blocks. I think it was. Okay. So now, uh, off of this block right here, um, and this is kind of flexible. Like if your base is kind of like big, like if you're building your base and like the wall of the base is like up here or something like that, um, you can bring this out. Um, what we're about to build is vertical, um, so it could it could extend past your walls. You're also fully welcome to bring what I'm about to build uh, down. You can like go down and build it further down so that you have more space. 
Um, so it's very flexible. Just make sure the redstone dust attaches to it and the signal reaches is important. Um, okay. So we're going to go out one block like this, and this is just to get the redstone to face the right direction. And then what we're going to do is we're going to build, uh, build a T flip-flop um, that works in both Java and Bedrock Edition. And I always forget how to do this. I think it's a dropper facing up next to this redstone. A dropper facing this way. We get a hopper that faces down. And then we get a dropper that faces into this dropper as well. Uh, make sure I did that right. Um, something I didn't mention in the materials list is that you might want a um, container of some sort, I like furnaces because they're cheap, to put on top of the hopper. Um, this just makes the hopper a little bit more lag friendly as well as it doesn't uh, give you the opportunity to put an item in there and break the T flip-flop. Um, and then I'm just gonna put an item into one of these things. Uh, not that one, but one of these. Um, what a T flip-flop does is it allows us to basically save the state whether or not it's up or down um, in a way that's really convenient for us. Um, off of this, dropper right here, so on the opposite end of the redstone, we're gonna place a comparator facing out. Um, the torch on the front should be off. If it's on, uh, right click it, make sure it's off. And then I built a redstone here, and then we get a repeater here. Um, and this is because the signal will have a signal strength of one, so you have to uh, like immediately repeat it or else it won't reach anything. Um, the way to test this is I can put a redstone torch here. Um, I might have to do it a couple times. So it'll be like off probably or on. Um, it'll be off now and then it'll be on. Um, and this is just so that we can again save the state of this um, and it's very convenient. Okay. So now I, I, I'm going to make the button for my little room here. Um, the buttons need to attach to anywhere along this line. Um, I'm going to attach it on this corner and I'll just like bring it up to my room. And this part doesn't really matter where your button is. Like it's going to be different for everybody. Um, so just make sure that the redstone reaches, um, and make sure that you don't have more than 15 blocks of pure redstone. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, if you have more than 15 blocks, put a repeater, um, before this corner happens. Um, so like if I, if there, if there was like 15 blocks between my button and this block, I would put a repeater so that the signal gets refreshed. Um, and mainly if you press the button and nothing happens, it, uh, double check that everything's reaching where it needs to. Um, so I'm just gonna press it again and make sure that our T flip flop works and it does. Okay. So now the next part of this, um, I'm going to put two blocks on the like side of these pistons facing, um, into this, like this direction that we have. Um, there doesn't need to be a block under the piston. Um, you're welcome to have one if you want to. I kind of prefer the look of it, to be honest, um, but whatever. We're going to put two repeaters facing into the pistons. Um, we're going to bring this signal over. Um, I think three blocks here so that we don't end up connecting it to the um, to this line. I'm going to put, put a block down. Um, and we want a repeater here, specifically like off of this line, but not before this repeater or not before this. Um, and this is because the relative delays of these things matter a lot. Um, we're going to make a delay four here. Um, and it can be on anything on like this block or it could be on the block that's on. And then we also need to connect it to this one. And I just like went under um, like that. It was kind of ugly, but it is what it is. And this is because we need to build stuff on top of it as well. Um, so now with this one, we want to build blocks in the middle and specifically we want to connect a repeater facing into this repeater. Um, I'm gonna put on delay two and this is just cause I'm OCD and I'll explain why that, why I'm OCD about that in a minute. And then we're gonna connect it to this repeater over here. Um, essentially what we'll see is I this repeater will lock. So if I were to power this line, um, the repeater does not turn on. Um, and this is just so that we can have it like push the blocks back and forth um, in order for it to not like interfere with each other. Now off of this corner right here, we go at one block and this is just get the direction of the redstone torch or the, rest, uh, the redstone dust to be good. We put a redstone torch on the block that the dust is facing into. We put a block there. Um, I didn't say that. And then we do the same thing where we put a repeater facing into that repeater. Um, and this is a delay of one, and then the uh, the torch is also a delay of one, 
and I'm just OCD, so I made this a delay of two, so that's the same delay. I don't think this being a delay of one breaks anything. Um, I'm just, yeah. Okay, so that should really be the only mechan like the whole mechanism. What we want to do is place our other block. So I have soul sand up here. We want to place our other block on one of these sides. It, I don't think it matters which one. I'll place on that one. If your magma block is up here, do your soul sand. And then we should be able to press the button and have it work. You might have to press it a couple times um, if the T flip flop isn't um, correct and mine is not working. So I definitely messed something up. Interesting. Okay. All right. I figured out why it was not working. Um, this block right here that goes next to this sticky piston needs to be glass. Um, and this is because the redstone was powering this piston and it was making it where it just like wasn't retracting at the right time. Uh, make this glass or some transparent block. Um, and it should work now. And I was totally messing with all my delays. So I need to like fix everything now. Um, okay. Now it should work. Um, you might have to press it a couple times to like clear it out. So then it goes soul sand to magma, magma to soul sand. I'm going to do it a bunch of times because now I'm really paranoid. Um, okay. It seems like we're good. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. This needs to be glass. And that's just because um, if it's not, this piston will get powered by this being on. Um, so this should be the entire mechanism now. Um, so... Really, the only thing that's left is to build the bubble column itself, as well as building your floors um, and bringing down your buttons. Um, there's nothing special with bringing down your buttons. Like if I just have a button up here, um, all you have to do is just bring the redstone down, make sure the signal gets down there. Um, I usually just make like a spiral where I kind of just like go down and I just kind of go in circles. Um, the main thing to worry about here is if you have more than 15 blocks, it's so like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, let's say I have 15, 15. Um, you need to add a repeater like this, and then you can keep going down. Um, and this is just so that you can refresh the signal so that it will reach all the way down to the bottom. Um, otherwise there's no like requirements. This can happen anywhere. Um, you can bring it out and then bring it down if you need more space. Just make sure that this button and like this button all connect down to this corner at some point. Um, and make sure that they are um, the signal strength is good enough in order to reach all the way to these areas right here. Otherwise, there's nothing else to do for the redstone. Um, for the actual water column itself, I'm going to use gates. And I'm going to do one end, like so there's only one side to get in. Um, I recommend doing three or four blocks tall of gates so that you can get in and out easily. Um, and in particular, when it is magma, it'll hurt you. Um, a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit, um, fire resistance will help. Um, so I recommend doing at least like three or four blocks here so they can get out before you hit the magma. Um, and in this case, what you do is you just get a bunch of, um, to, to, don't know where anything is, get a bunch of water source blocks and they have to be water source blocks. So like you have to place a source block here, a source block here, a source block here. Um, and what I usually do, and this is a terrible way to do it, but what I would do is I have myself a like infinite water source here um, like that. And then what I do is I essentially ride this thing up. So essentially I'll place this here and then I'll do this. Um, and this works underground as well. I'll come back down, get the water. I'll get back in and then I'll do another one. And then I'll like do it. I'll grab it and then I'll go back in. And then I'll do another layer. Um, this is a terrible way to do it. The actual way to do this is if you have kelp, um, you can replace this with dirt temporarily, the soul sand, and just place kelp all the way up and it will turn it into source blocks. Um, but I never have kelp. Uh, so I just do it the way that I just showed. And that's really inefficient, but it's very fun. Very fun. Um, so we bring this all the way up to where we would want to go. Um, and this is just an example. Um, this part's pretty straightforward i think just make sure that they're source blocks if it's not working or if it's working only to up to a, a section um double check that you have source blocks like this is pushing me up if i put this here it will not work because i because i kind of broke the i broke the chain so you'd want to have source blocks on every single block um in this case we just have another floor we can bring the button up to this floor and then we do the exact same thing with the gates 
Um, and then there's no like requirements after that. You could do as many floors as you want, as many buttons as you want. Um, I think this is just a technical thing. Wooden buttons last longer than stone buttons. Um, I don't think it matters which one you use. I think a wood button will make it go slower. I don't think it matters which one you use though. Um, but a stone button will go a little faster. So I recommend stone. Um, but yeah, otherwise I don't think there's any other things that you need to know. Um, you can have as many of these as you'd like. Um, and also you don't need to have all of this right here. You can extend out all of the redstone. I just tried to make it as compact as possible. Um, but if your base requires this to be somewhere else, you can totally make it somewhere else. Um, the main thing is, is that make sure that this redstone is a uh, length one, um, because this will be a really weak signal and just make sure that all of the signals reach where they need to go. Um, those are the only requirements. Otherwise you can move everything everywhere that you need to. All right, guys, that'll be it for this video. Um, I apologize for any mistakes I made. Um, I'm not particularly awake today. Um, so I'm sorry for that. I hope you have a wonderful day. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to leave them down in the comments and I'll be happy to debug. If you do leave comments, uh, the more information for me, the better. Um, and I hope to see you next time.